Yes, ma'am. A couple questions on the Times Square bomb suspect. We have a report out um, from law enforcement officials saying that he's been connected to a terror training camp in Pakistan. So are we now looking at someone who's not a lone wolf, but someone who might have connections to an overseas plot? I would just say this. We're in the middle of an active and ongoing investigation. Uh, we are uh, part of that active and ongoing investigation is to examine uh, the time uh, that this individual spent in Pakistan. Uh, but I don't have anything more to discuss on that here. Have you been able to rule out the idea that he was acting alone? Uh, again, this is an ongoing investigation, uh, and I don't have anything further on it. And then one of the things that hasn't really been explained very clearly is how he actually managed to get on this flight. He was on the no-fly list earlier that day. His name was very well known in the law enforcement community. So how did that happen? How did yeah. he make it Well, hard? again, we're, we're uh, uh, there's a process going back and looking at uh, all that happened, I, I, I think it is important to understand that uh, the system is built with uh, necessary and built-in redundancy so that uh, if a name is added and a carrier misses the added name, that Customs and Border Patrol, once a manifest is locked, runs those names through uh, a center and can identify uh, anything, uh, anything that a carrier may have missed. Uh, I think Secretary Napolitano and others said today, uh, again, talked about the fact that that was built in redundancy. Um, CBP caught and apprehended that individual uh, before the plane left, uh, and even, uh, even would have, I think she said, done so uh, we have the authority to either have the plane land or turn around. Uh, so again, th there's, a, there's a series of built-in redundancies, this being one of them, where Customs and Border Patrol checks a lock manifest to ensure that, uh, uh, again, if there's a, uh, a mistake by a carrier, uh, it can be double-checked. So is this a case of a mistake by this carrier? Well, that's uh, part of the investigation we're looking at. Has yes, the President sir. spoken to anyone at BP yet? And, spoken with anybody? Anyone yet? at BP yet? And does, Not that do I'm you aware. feel that the BP is now responding appropriately to the, the oil slate? Well, I, 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 Steve, I don't have a lot to add from yesterday in terms of this. Obviously, there are, uh, there are many different things that, uh, that BP uh, has expertise on and are working on, most notably uh, capping the well. Uh, we are we are focused on uh, responding to the leak uh, and ensuring uh, a minimal amount of environmental or economic uh, disruption. That's our focus. And what about this, this federal law that, that may or may not require, or right. BP would be capped at $75 million in, in payout? Is Understand this. There is... They're, they're, they are li fully liable for cleanup and recovery costs per the Oil Pollution Act of 1990. Uh, the cap is, is not in place if somebody is found to be either grossly negligent, uh, conduct, willful mis uh, involved in willful misconduct, or in violation of federal regulations. As you know, there's an investigation ongoing as to uh, the cause behind, uh, behind the spill. Uh, in addition to that, I checked on this at the conclusion of, of yesterday's briefing. Folks in the administration were working on legislation to lift, uh, lift that cap and extend it. Obviously, we've got a situation where $75 million could easily, um, uh, we, we could easily top $75 million in, in a short period of time. Uh, we understand that this law was passed uh, and signed 20 years ago. So uh, there are, there are fail-safes that are built into that law that remove the cap based on the conditions that caused the spill. And uh, our administration will work with Congress, Democrats and Republicans to change that uh, cap and ensure, uh, as I've said and as the President said, that uh, BP is the uh, responsible party, they're the cause of this bill and they'll pay for uh, everything involved in this bill. Is there another cap that you would support in this legislation? Well, I, I, I think uh, uh, I think Senator Menendez's bill is at ten billion. 
uh, I have, uh, they're working with uh, and, and thinking through uh, various caps. Again, I, I would uh, suffice to say uh, our admonition that uh, BP will pay for this uh, leak is, uh, is they'll, they will pay for this leak. Yes. Um, regarding uh, reports from the Pakistani government that Faisal uh, Shahzad uh, had been at a trading camp, did U.S. intelligence, had, had the Pakistanis, before this incident took place, had the Pakistani government told the U.S. government in any way about Faisal Shahzad having attended uh, this camp? Uh, I, I can go back and, uh, and see uh, whether any of that uh, came across. Uh, I, I would say this about uh, the government of Pakistan. Obviously, uh, we're in close contact with them uh, and working with them on a number of issues surrounding this. The um, no-fly list, is there a difference between how airlines treat passengers on the no-fly list who are flying into the U.S. and how pa airlines treat passengers on the no-fly list who are flying out of the U.S.? Uh, I, I would uh, I would point you to uh, to DHS, uh, Jake, on the specifics of that. Um, uh, the 9/11 Commission recommended that there be increased security not only on people coming into this country but people leaving this country, and there have been criticisms that that last part has not really been acted on. I, I can I, I can check with uh, with folks here again. I think I do think it is important to stress that uh, as I said a minute ago. The system is built with, um, uh, with mechanisms, duplicative mechanisms, in order to ensure that uh, if, again, if a carrier uh, isn't picking up a change in the no-fly list, uh, that, uh, that that change can be caught when uh, Customs and Border uh, Patrol go through the manifest again uh, prior, to, uh, prior to the flight leave. Regarding Abdul Muttalib and this incident with Shahzad, it would seem that both times the American people got lucky. Uh, both times Abdul Muttalib and Shahzad failed to detonate the bomb, but had it not been for the, the terrorists, the attempted terrorists' failure, we could be looking at disasters. Um, I know the President credited uh, vigilant innocent bystanders who called it in, but it's, it would seem, at least based on what NYPD says, that the reason the incident didn't happen was because the bomb uh, wasn't going to work. Is, does the president, do we, does he just feel lucky? I mean, it feels like we dodged a bullet here again. Well, Jake, I think as the president said today, this is a reminder of uh, those that seek to do this country and its citizens, its innocent citizens harm. Uh, it is why we must remain vigilant. Uh, it is why um, uh, we are proud of the law enforcement that we have that, as you heard Commissioner Kelly uh, discuss, was able to uh, go from uh, the scene of this possible incident on Saturday night and have somebody uh, apprehended some 53 hours later. Uh, the vigilance of, as you mentioned, uh, citizens that are that notice suspicious activity, um, uh, and uh, uh, that's why the, the the president and this administration will continue to take all the steps that are necessary to keep our country safe. Does, does the president look at this incident and say, my God, it's just because this guy was incompetent that the bomb didn't go off. We need to take step A, B, C, D. Well, look, again, we, we've got, a, a, a Jake, a very active investigation in which uh, we'll have a, a course to look at all of the circumstances uh, surrounding this. and. Uh, uh, and change whatever needs to be changed. So no feeling of relief by the president? No, no I, I, th there's, look, Jake, e suffice to say each and every day the president receives information uh, that uh, of, uh, of aspects of uh, uh, individuals that seek to do this country harm. Uh, each and every day his job is to uh, do all that he can to ensure uh, with his administration uh, that that doesn't come to pass. Uh, obviously, there is uh, a tremendous relief that uh, nobody was hurt, um, uh, and uh, great thanks uh, for those that, uh, in a short period of time, have done the job they needed to do to track this uh, this individual down. Robert, I want to follow on that because, um, as Jake lays out, the Denver case, the Christmas Day case, now this case, there seems to be an increase. We've known since 9/11 well, terrorists. Remember also, there's. There's the Headley case in Chicago. 
Uh, you mentioned the Denver case, which for those unfamiliar, that's, uh, that's Zazie, uh, an individual uh, through, um, let me make sure I'm careful here, through uh, methods is, uh, is discovered uh, and apprehended. Uh, so, uh, look, I, I think m maybe the tell of this is, uh, uh, is law enforcement that, uh, uh, that continue to do uh, a superb job in keeping us safe. Right, but this had been happening since 9-11 a lot in the shadows, and now in recent months on the President's Watch, the American people are seeing these play out a lot more and, and coming very close, as Jake said, to actually being terror attacks with lives lost. What do you think is going on here? Do you think the terrorists are increasing? of their efforts uh, much more now than they were just a year or so ago? Well, is there, what, what, I can't, they see an opportunity? And I is, can't speak to the patterns that, uh, that, that they're involved in. I can speak to the patterns uh, that this administration is involved in and the fact that we have um, greatly increased the, uh, our tempo as it relates to um, terrorist activities uh, throughout the world on, uh, on a number of continents. Um, uh, I think uh, um, that, that, uh, that's the president has been very focused on that since the, the time he came to office. On the no-fly list question, you said it's being investigated now, but after the Christmas Day uh, terror attempt, um, there were also all kinds of reviews here by the White House. Uh, and in well, that case... Let me just make sure that I understand. There's, a, there's an active and ongoing investigation that is working through a whole host of issues, so right. yes. But after the Christmas Day attack, President ordered reviews here of his administration about the terror watch list, et cetera. And then he came back to the White House after being in Hawaii January 5th. He said, quote, I want specific recommendations for corrective actions to fix what went wrong. I want those reforms implemented immediately so that this doesn't happen again. And yet here we are four months later, someone is put on the no-fly list and is able to get on a plane anyway. Well, let, 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 let's not, let's, let's, let's give the course of the facts here uh, before we jump to uh, any series of, uh, of whys and what fors based on the fact that this is an individual that was put on the no-fly list. Uh, and as a course of how the no-fly list works, Customs and Border Patrol identified and apprehended that suspect. Uh, so uh, that person was on the no-fly list uh, and that, that plane didn't fly and that individual didn't fly. In the case of the Christmas Day bomber, he was not on the no-fly list. He was on a separate terror watch list. So the president said he ordered reviews to sort all of, all of this out. So how can the American people have confidence in these various terror watch lists, no-fly lists, if people are still able to get on planes? In both cases, they were able, despite being well, on various and lists. I, obviously, you're talking about two, uh, two different cases and, quite frankly, two different lists. Right. You're talking about a, a, a tides list and you're talking about a no-fly list. Right. Again. And I, I think it's important that your viewers understand uh, the individual was on a no-fly list, and as a result of being on that no-fly list and the Customs and Border Patrol checking the manifests once locked for a flight leaving this country, the same way they do in checking inbound flights that come from overseas, uh, that individual was pulled off of a plane. A plane that had already left the game. Uh, I mean, it had left, uh, and they had well, pulled it back. Uh, uh, I, we're working through some of the TikTok, but understand this, Jake, that the list identifies people that are not allowed to fly. This individual was identified as a course of Customs and Border Patrol and, and apprehended. He didn't fly. Because an airline employee saw that he paid cash at the last minute and then alerted folks. So, so he did well, that, again, but the I, plane did leave the gate. Uh, uh, well, uh, I'm checking on some of the TikTok on this, uh, uh, understanding again uh, uh, let me go through some of the, uh, the TikTok on this and I'll be One back. One last thing on the yeah. timeline. The president, uh, the car started smoking, as we understand, about 6.28 p.m. on Saturday night. The president, when you put out a release on Saturday night, said that he was briefed on this at 10.45. Yeah. Is that the first time he was briefed and are you concerned yes. that there was four hours between when this started? I know he can't be on top of every single situation in the world, but this is Times Square. It was shut down. Right. Are you concerned about the time it took four hours before no, the president? And, uh, uh, I was at, I was sitting on the same stage you were and uh, uh, reading emails uh, from the situation room uh, about... So you were about, being notified? There were many of us that were being notified. In fact, um, uh, I was sitting, from where I was sitting, the vantage point, the person that I could see most squarely was the mayor of New York. Um, 
Uh, so throughout the course of this, yes, I'm, I'm checking and seeing uh, updates about a possible situation, um, which in all honesty, Ed, we get a lot of, um, whether it's uh, something that might come from a flight or some a passenger might say something that w we went through this on the trip to Prague. Um, uh, so obviously many of us were alerted. Uh, John uh, briefed the president right after he left, uh, right after he left the dinner. Yes, sir. Uh, Robert, you mentioned the Headley case after uh, Zassi and Times Square and Christmas Bomber were all mentioned. Is it the White House, the perception of the White House that there has been an increase in attempted attacks over the past, during the president's I, uh, No, I just, Ed was listing uh, high profile cases and I just added one to that list. I, I don't, I, I don't know, uh, Chip, in terms of looking at statistics, uh, uh, whether that's the case or not. You also said in response to that that the president is uh, uh, has increased the tempo on uh, against terrorists uh, on continents around the world. Do you yes. think part of this is in response to that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I uh, look. There are obviously people uh, that seek to do this country harm that are opposed to uh, what the president outlined in Afghanistan in in terms of increasing uh, our military presence in order to ensure that the Taliban and its extremist allies uh, aren't allowed to take power in that country again and provide a safe haven for al-Qaeda uh, in a situation that they had uh, prior to 9-11 that allowed them to uh, train and plan uh, the attacks that were executed on that day uh, with, uh, without disruption. So uh, whether it's increased tempo, whether it's Afghanistan, uh, I, I, I don't know the answer to uh, it, to it exactly. I'm sure there are some that have uh, cited both of those uh, uh, for uh, uh, cited both of those decisions for their misguided uh, and uh, and murderous rages. Is it the president's working assumption that there are other people uh, out there right now uh, planning well, these kinds of attacks? Safe to say, Chip, we we each and every day and each and every night, uh, both the president and uh, all of those charged at a federal, state, and local level in keeping this country safe uh, are on alert for anything that that could happen. Obviously, um, uh, we are vigilant in, uh, in all that we do. And are there some uh, attacks uh, or at least plots at some form, uh, at some level uh, that never become known publicly? <laughs> If I say yes, then they'd become they known, are. wouldn't they? <laughs> Not, you know, uh, again, I would are. simply leave it at the fact that, uh, uh, look, the president and, and the team come across uh, a lot of information uh, every day uh, about those that seek to do this country and its citizens harm. And you said earlier that uh, the administration is in close contact with Pakistan and working closely with Pakistan. Is the president personally involved in that? Has he made any calls no, to the, anybody uh, the, the only calls that, uh, that he's made uh, uh, that I know of this morning or this afternoon, well, he called uh, the head of the Customs and Border Patrol uh, to thank uh, him for uh, the great work that, uh, that they did uh, in this case. Uh, and he spoke with uh, the governors of Arkansas and Mississippi about uh, about flooding. Okay, um, Supreme Court, uh, can you rule out this week yet? Uh, uh, I, I will say I'm, I, uh, many of you have emailed me uh, throughout the morning and the afternoon uh, uh, about. Uh, I even got a what I, I even got a, an email early afternoon about whether I could rule out all of tomorrow. So. Uh, I will just uh, I will just simply say that uh, when the president informs us that he's uh, made that decision, um, uh, we will notify you as to when uh, that announcement will be. I I'm I'm not going to uh, uh, every day rule in or rule out uh, when that might be. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I. Uh, <laughs> you guys give me a calendar and like circle possible days and sort of narrow this thing down. No, I don't. I I I, I have. Uh, I said that. I said almost the same thing yesterday. Exact same thing yesterday. And 
uh, that, uh, that, that, that did not cut down on any of my email traffic. So I will not penalize any of you all for, uh, I, uh, all of them that end in Y are still applicable. Can you uh, lay out, you mentioned there's a series of redundancies with the no-fly list at the airport. Can you lay out in the ideal case how this works? As I understand it, the airlines check the no-fly list against the passengers. Yeah, let me get, and then I, they, can, I can see if, I would point you to DHS in terms of, um, I'll say this, contact DHS about what they're going to publicly give you. I, I don't, I, I'm, so, I, I'm happy to say there are built-in redundancies. I don't think it would make a ton of sense to enumerate uh, publicly uh, exactly what the process is uh, in the event that uh, um, somebody uses that to figure out how uh, to get around anything. I guess it, what I hear you saying is that essentially the system worked because CBP was able to detect this person and yank them off the plane. Was, did they miss any opportunity to do that? Or was that their first opportunity to detect this person? Uh, well, they availed themselves of it, and it was successful. Again, I'd point you to DHS. Uh, but uh, whatever term you want to use, Savannah, the, the no-fly list uh, provides a, a list of individuals uh, not allowed to fly. Uh, checking that through a locked-in manifest for that flight uh, Customs and Border Patrol identified uh, an individual uh, that uh, shouldn't be allowed to fly, and he wasn't. Do you think the system worked if a person on the no-fly list was able to get onto the so plane? I think the system uh, is set up to provide, as I said, the type of redundancy uh, which any good system would be set up to do. Uh, a suspect was identified surveilled, apprehended, uh, is in custody, is, in, is being questioned, is providing, as the Attorney General and others have said, useful and valuable information, uh, and will soon start the process, um, the legal process of uh, being brought to justice. So uh, whatever term you want to use, a suspect was identified uh, and in a rather short period of time is uh, uh, is providing information uh, that is that is helpful uh, and is in the process of soon uh, formally entering the justice system. Last thing, Secretary Napolitano indicated that even if the plane had taken off, that DHS and the CBP has mm -hmm. the authority to turn yes. the plane around. Do you think the president, though, is concerned about a, a set of policies, a, a set of procedures that would allow that to happen? I mean, in other words, once well, the plane has taken off, it's not as though it's easy come, easy go. I mean, then a person on the no-fly list potentially could cause some havoc. I mean, is there any policy well, change I would that, say you, this. that these Well, first and foremost, I, I don't know what, I'm not entirely sure what you're alluding to, but I would say that uh, obviously each passenger uh, and their luggage uh, is screened as they would be for uh, for any flight. So I'm, I'm not... I don't. I don't know what. If you were alluding to something, I, I think it's important to understand that yeah. uh, uh, that uh, both sets of that screening happens uh, as a matter of uh, uh, as a matter of every flight. But he uh, wasn't subject to extra scrutiny, was he? Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, but he went through the process uh, of of being screened. So I'm just trying to. Do you think the president's comfortable <coughs> with? the way these procedures are set up. Nothing about this set of facts jumps well, again, out at him as saying, maybe we could do a little again, better. Again, Savannah, I, I think we are, look, we are, we will obviously, uh, as, as we would and as we do uh, in every situation, evaluate, um, evaluate everything. Uh, but again, there's a, there was a system that provided a name on a list uh, intended not to have an individual fly. Uh, Customs and Border Patrol, uh, using that system, found that individual, uh, and he was apprehended and wasn't allowed to fly. Yes, ma'am. Um, who, who, if anyone, at the White House was consulted on the procedures you used to interrogate the suspect? Uh, well, I would say uh, questioning and interrogation uh, on, on those aspects, um, Obviously, John Brennan here, uh, the uh, intelligence community, 
including the CIA, uh, the Director of National Intelligence, the National, Counter the National Counterterrorism Center, uh, and the Department of Homeland Security uh, have all been um, uh, part of uh, those decisions. Was the high-value detainee interrogation group that deployed for this? Is that what uh, you're referring the, to? Um, the questioning draws on uh, the expertise and the resources uh, of the Hague. Wait, it draws on the expertise and the resources. So I am not going to get. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get into the, the the identities of who's exactly in the room, but uh, again, uh, draws on the resources of the Hig. Yes. And um, on a much comparatively lighter note, um, could you talk about why the White House will or will not get involved at the Hawaii special election, which looks like a division between two Democrats is going to hand a Democratic seat to a Republican? Well, let me let me get some answers for you on that. I have to admit, I've, I've I have. Uh, uh, I love Hawaii, but I've been focused on uh, on on uh, uh, on flights and oil today. So, uh, but I, I, we will get you something on that. I promise. Mark. Robert, in in lieu of circling a day on a calendar, can you say whether <laughs> uh, the president has completed the process of interviewing candidates for the nomination? I'm not sure. Has he spoken to Justice Stevens about uh, his replacement? Uh, I can check with that. I, I don't know the answer to that, to be honest with you. And in a speech today at the <laughs> Business Council. And that's why I'm laughing not at you, Mark, but April, who who started this process many weeks ago, I, appears to have in her head formulated a different way to ask what she asked several weeks ago. So I'm, I want you to, I, uh, we'll, we'll, don't worry, I, we'll, we'll get back there, April, and you can uh, try, try one more time. If you'd like to follow behind Mark, sure. Let me make sure Mark is done. I'm sorry. Well, last question. On, on the, in a speech to the Business Council, the President again today, urge them to rein in their lobbyists. Doesn't the president think corporations have as much right as anybody to express their view and, and try and get their, their you know, wishes done in Congress? Uh, well, I think what the president was speaking specifically about uh, is as those lobbying activities relate to um, financial reform. Right. Uh, the president believes that financial reform is in the best interest of those on Wall Street, those on Main Street, and all those that do business with both. Um, we have to have a system in place uh, where the rules of the road do not allow what happened almost two years ago from happening. That I don't think any business uh, believes that the economic downturn that was accelerated greatly by and in many ways caused by some of the risky uh, decisions that were made on Wall Street, I don't, I don't think any of those businesses think uh, it's been a great time for them. Uh, the president believes that the way, one of the ways to put our economy back on that strong foundation is to have strong rules for the road uh, with uh, financial reform. But if a company believes that the uh, uh, Wall Street reform that he wants is not in the company's best interests, don't they have the right to lobby against it uh, as on any bill? They have the right to be wrong that uh, that uh, it's not in the best interest of this country or, the, or, or that company uh, to have strong rules. Uh, the president vehemently disagrees with that. And I think, uh, again, I, I, don't, I, don't know of, I don't know of a business that can look back at the time uh, dating back to 2007, and think this was a uh, uh, think this was a uh, robust time for um, for them to be selling what they're selling or to offering what they're offering based on the fact that uh, it's hard to sell those products when eight and a half million people have lost their job. The president believes that it's in the interest of all those involved, including business, to support strong financial reform. Well, and, back to oh, I'm sorry. Let's go to April and more. Um, yeah, following up on the Supreme Court, um, just in one of your answers, it seems like he's close to, if he has not, he's close to finishing up 
his interview process of the potentials. Is that today, tomorrow, sometime this week? I mean, no, seriously, I mean, the way you... you, you that would you sort of know. narrow down the decision-making process if I could close down the decision -making. I mean, but no, 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 the, 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 the questioning or, or interviews are somewhat different than the process, uh, the ending of the process. I mean... I, well, I said this, I, I, I think I said, uh, I hope I said, uh, bless you, that, uh, goodness, um, that, uh, that this is a process that's not yet finished. So when the president went into it, he had a mindset of what he was looking for in a candidate. Is he, in the midst of talking to all of these potentials, has he somewhat come away with what he wants and maybe even gotten more than what he expected um, in his conversations with you guys? I, uh, uh, I, I, April, for a lot of reasons, don't want to get into uh, uh, what, uh, w what he has imparted uh, to to us about those conversations. Midway or close to the end of the list, I mean, not the list of the process, possibly. Could you tell us about the list of potentials? Could you tell us, <laughs> of, I mean, not- Names of the <laughs> I would love for, I would love for- <laughs> I didn't realize, April, that you've, you've narrowed this down for me. Uh, poor Mark was way too subtle. He just could, you know, what about tomorrow or maybe later this week? All you want is the, the date in which the process of his decision-making will be concluded and the names with which he'll go through that decision-making process. I, I, uh, I, 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 I appreciate the opportunity to uh, be more fulsome on each of those questions, but uh, uh, I, I, I will demure. Yes, sir. Robert, uh, I'll come back. I'll come back. Back to the New York Park case. One uh, first a factual question. At the time of the suspect's arrest, uh, did he have any dangerous weapons or tools in his possession? Uh, I would, uh, I don't offhand know the specific answer to that, and I'd point you to the Department of Justice. And uh, Secretary Napolitano early, um, earlier said that characterized this as a one off event. Is that statement inoperative? No, I, again, I, 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 as a I think rather than getting into characterizing a lot of these things uh, in the midst of an active uh, investigation, uh, I think we will uh, just simply continue that process of the investigation uh, and have more to say as it, uh, as it transpires. Finally, can you give us any information about the suspect's path <laughs> to U.S. citizenship and what he was doing in the United States? Uh, I, I, nothing that I want to discuss, no. When, Ali Bissell says the moment of tension between the U.S. and Israel is now gone after the president's lunch with him today. Um, did they reach a meeting of the minds on, on settlement expansion in, in East Jerusalem? I think you heard, uh, uh, I think you uh, heard Mr. Bissell talk about uh, uh, his lunch uh, with the president. They had an opportunity to both talk about and agree on uh, the need to move forward with that peace process. Uh, I'm not going to get, uh, I, I don't want to go further than, uh, than he would in characterizing what they discussed. On the um, Deepwater Horizon oil spill, um, Florida Senator Nelson, who is one of the people sponsoring the legislation that would raise the, the economic damages to $10 billion, also says that the president's um, uh, hopes for expanding offshore oil drilling are dead on arrival. Uh, is the, the the briefing today? I think it's going on now. I think um, there is a. There, I I, uh, I believe there is with Secretary Salazar and a uh, host of other officials. Yeah. Is that intended to to, to maybe uh, facilitate the the passage of this legislation to deal with some of the concerns that the, the spill has on people who might have been prepared to support the president? No. I, I, this is a, um, a, a a bipartisan bicameral briefing. Uh, on the federal response thus far, as you mentioned, on uh, on the BP oil spill, um, the actions that we've taken to date. Uh, when we, the, the president has asked for Secretary Salazar, as head of the Department of Interior, uh, and uh, has purview over drilling issues, uh, to to investigate what happened. At, with this incident and to report back to him uh, in 30 days. And what we have said is that the president would use all of that information to make decisions uh, going forward on, uh, on our offshore policy. 
As for critics who are calling this uh, your Katrina, is there uh, and the I, President I, Obama's Katrina? Can I say this? I, I, can I, I, I watched Fox yesterday. I really didn't want to go there. Uh, but you sort of, <laughs> you opened both the double doors and it, voila, it, it here I am. I, it wasn't just Fox calling this your Katrina. No, no, but Fox had the very special and unique interview with Michael Brown. You opened it and I had to do it. Uh, who, for those who weren't uh, uh, let in on the big secret, Mr. Brown, FEMA Director Brown under uh, Katrina, uh, intimated on Fox, uh, and it wasn't, I will editorially say, didn't appear to be pushed back on real hard, that this spill was uh, leaked on purpose in order for us to walk back our environmental and drilling decisions and that the leak that we did on purpose got out of control and now is too big to contain. So suffice to say when you suffice to what is his, at, his Mr. Brown's attribution. I can only wish that the network that you work for had asked that prior to interviewing the him yesterday. In here yeah. ask that. Well uh, you should, so I'm asking you. You should call headquarters, my friend. And, I'm asking uh, you. Ask for somebody who makes the decisions to put people like that. Because i got to tell you, Wendell, I'm not entirely sure that a factual answer that I might give to any one of your questions is going to change the notion that your network put out the former FEMA director to make an accusation that uh, the well had been purposefully set off uh, in order to uh, change uh, an offshore drilling decision. Nor would that affect the reporting I do. I, I, I didn't intimate that it did. I, again, I would, you well, and Major should. Uh, if we can, let's move on from it. You could get on a conference call and maybe do some work. Go Are ahead. There lessons learned here from this oil spill, from the BP Deep Water Horizon oil spill? Well, um, look, I, I think we. first and foremost, are focused on the, uh, the efforts that I discussed on, uh, on capping this well and ensuring what, what escapes from that well doesn't uh, do damage uh, to the environment or to the local economy and ensuring that uh, we've got uh, mechanisms in place uh, to deal with the possible spread. Um, we will have a chance to go back and look at the conditions that led to, and that's what Secretary Salazar is tasked to do, uh, to to look at that uh, and to make evaluations as to anything that could have been done differently. I will say, um, you know, the Coast Guard responded uh, immediately to distress calls of a fire and explosion uh, aboard the BP Deepwater Horizon uh, with four vessels as part of uh, of those recovery efforts. Robert, in that list that you gave us earlier of uh, uh, recent terrorist acts, uh, Major Nidal Hassan, is he on there too? The four yeah, I, I would add him on there too, sure. And um, in, in developing these connections to Pakistan, are you also looking at the apparent reversal, economic reversal that this, uh, that, that this guy suffered recently as a possible motivation? Yeah. Again, I would say uh, at this point in the investigation, uh, I think uh, any and all leads are being uh, actively looked at. Uh, in determining uh, uh, where this individual went uh, and what this individual was intending to do. Sure. Hello, Robert. Yes, How are you? I'm good. Welcome. You don't, aren't always going to do these this late, are no, you? No, I, I, I apologize. We did, I originally was scheduled to do this uh, right, would have, this would have overlapped with, uh, with the Attorney General uh, and the Secretary of Homeland Security and didn't think that that made a whole lot of sense for you guys, so. Uh, we will try to do these at a more say now. Um, accepting your argument about this process of redundancy, so I'll ask this question in our own process of redundancy. Um, <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, do you, so if accepting that, I can see how a passenger could get on a plane past airline personnel, even though they're on a no fly list. But once they're on that plane, before it leaves the gate, does this mean that? There is no, I mean, it's a no-fly list. So the plane, there's not in the background these redundancies checking. Planes 
so that they don't even take off before the, the backup regulators can attest that everyone on that plane is not on a no-fly list. So and, and is it even, as a practical matter, yeah. possible for planes to be held at gates until all the people yeah, who can weigh so. in on this um, do weigh in? Let, let me, again, let me try to get better clarity from, from DHS, because I think what you're asking, well, uh, let me just take and look at um, uh, the, whether the, I, I think I know what you're saying in terms of when the redundancy happens. Uh, Does it happen before the flight? Right. Let, the let, me, let, me, let me get with DHS uh, and others on that. And then possibly wouldn't that conflict, I mean, federal regulations uh, limit or, or, or hold <laughs> airlines accountable for their taking off on time and they're penalized if they too often don't take off on time. Is there a conflict there between uh, federal regulations on takeoff? And I can check on that. I, I, that. That's not something that I've heard talked about uh, uh, today, but I can certainly check on that. Yeah, Robert, admittedly, you have all these redundancies and backups and the rest of it. My question is to the President's view of all this. Is he not troubled that the first layer was a pass through that the that the, uh, that the suspect again, got on the plane. Mark, I, I, we're, we're in the we're Response in the process of we're we're in the process of uh, at this early hour. Uh, we will go back and see the time in which the information was added. Uh, there obviously is a carrier element to all of this, uh, in uh, and we will investigate whether uh, that carrier element was. Uh, was acted upon, but I, I, and, I, I, I right. So but but I think it's troubling that he got through that first layer. But I think it's important to understand that um, the reason that that redundancy is built in is because you don't want to leave any and all of this completely up to a carrier. You no, you want right? No, no, I understand. understand but I just want to I just want to make the point that. Um, it, that's the reason the system is designed uh, in a way that ensures that the action of one isn't doesn't determine the entire outcome. And so that's that's the reason that uh, uh, that I think it's important to understand that uh, even at that point there is uh, there is a step beyond. Um, quite frankly, you know th this is you know somebody who. This is a locked manifest. This is, here are the people that are on our plane as part of that flight plan and can be double checked through uh, Customs and Border Patrol, sending uh, that list to, uh, to a center to be um, checked against the no-fly list. We're going to people on our plane. See you later. We're taking off. I mean, and the plane left the gate. Uh, I understand what you're saying about all the other layers true. and all that, but there yeah. is still the fact that the the man was on the plane. Yeah. The plane flew back. Again, we're, we're, the president we're looking. Not find, the president no, no. Not I would say this, Mark. We're 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 going to look at every aspect of uh, of what happened. Again, understanding that the the way the system is designed uh, is to ensure that uh, many actions can check the actions of others. Uh, and in this case, uh, that's why the no-fly list uh, identified this individual. Yes, Bridging back to the Supreme Court, uh, that if any of the events of the last three days make the president reluctant to choose someone like uh, Janet Napolitano if she's in a role that uh, he thinks she, he needs her in, well, Has, have her chances of being chosen been decreased? Uh, I, I wouldn't say that. I, obviously, I think he is uh, enormously grateful for uh, the, the work uh, that she has done and the amount that just over the, as you said, over the past few days. Please don't read anything into the fact that I'm lauding her for the current job to, uh, obviously the president has a, a number of choices in front of him. I, I'd use this opportunity just to say that uh, I think the president believes uh, that she is, and, and the many people that work throughout law enforcement and at DHS are doing a terrific job. But that, but that would never <laughs> I can just, I can only, I'm just thinking in my head, like what exactly are the headlines saying right now as I, Say nice things about I. I'm. I. In, uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can only. This will be fun to watch. On something completely different. I'm, spin um, the wheel. I'm ready. 
Um, tomorrow at the Cinco de Mayo event that you're having, is the president going to talk about immigration reform? And I, I will admit I have not looked at the remarks. The I ask is because he, um, the last time he talked about it on Thursday, he caused, I guess you could say, some confusion about where he stood, and there's been a kind of strong reaction from the Hispanic community about that. I'm just wondering. <laughs> Let me, I will check the, uh, I will. And is uh, there anything else he's doing now that he's not going to New Jersey? Um, I have not gotten any scheduling updates, no. The only thing is that you know of is the... As best I know, that we have not added an additional event. Yes, so, I, let's hope. Yes, sir, sir. Speaking of immigration, the president has obviously been uh, pretty critical of the law in Arizona, calling it misguided, suggesting it may even violate uh, federal civil rights laws. Mm -hmm. What are his thoughts on the calls to boycott Arizona? Would, would he agree with that? I have not, uh, I have not heard him uh, uh, render an opinion on that. Robert, Senator McCain said this morning that it would be a mistake to read uh, Shazad his rights before questioning. Do you have a, how do you analyze that? Um, carefully. Um, <laughs> I, again, I, I think it's important to understand that these are decisions that are made in consultation with the intelligence community and with highly trained counterterrorism officials. Um, who have, are no less vested in getting every last bit of information from uh, an interview or an interrogation than it is possible. Uh, I think the insinuation somehow that that is not the case, uh, I think is somewhat of an affront to law enforcement uh, on a day in which I hope we laud uh, what they've done. Uh, I, <laughs> Some of the comments have been curious, I will admit. I, to, 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 say, to mention that uh, what was one of the comments was, uh, um, I know he's an American citizen, but still, that's the unique was viewpoint. That, was that a factor at all in the decision about when to Mirandize him? Uh, well, as the Attorney General said, there was a, um, originally, uh, he was originally um, interviewed uh, under a national security exemption. Uh, and uh, as I understand it, the guidance was uh, after uh, checking with uh, those in the intelligence community, um, uh, that uh, uh, that task was given to again those highly trained counterterrorism officials. Uh, he has he waived that, uh, and uh, at least when I was coming out, uh, I was in the impression he's continuing to be questioned. I think you said public safety exemption. I'm sorry, public safety. I also just quickly ask you, do you know if the administration is considering taking any steps to stop test drilling in the Arctic? Um, I can check. A lot of test drilling that's scheduled to begin in the Arctic. Uh, do you have dates for? Uh, let, let me uh, test drilling in Alaska. Okay, let me check. Are the, yes. uh, is the national security exception and the public safety I, exception I, basically the same thing? I, I, I meant to say public safety. I, I was in my head thinking the same thing, so I have not created a new exemption yet. Sorry. On the costs uh, of the oil spill, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, what BP is liable for, is it just damages or are you keeping tabs on the cost of uh, sending the Coast Guard, all the federal costs, the yeah. C-130s that had to do flight? That is, uh, uh, well, uh, that has been discussed. They, that is part of the cleanup and recovery efforts uh, that BP would be liable for, yes. <coughs> Robert, if the President thought that um, drilling was safe when he made his, relatively safe, and that there were very few accidents like these when he made his announcement five or so weeks ago, why would he not just change his mind at this point, kind of akin to the Governor of California, and say, I was mistaken, it's obviously not safe, I want to walk back well, from my yeah, announcement. I think I think there are a series of things you want to examine and investigate as part of uh, what uh, may or may not have happened. Uh, is there, I mean, is there a, is there, is there a technological, was there a technological failure? Are there additional uh, steps or, or I hate to use the word since we've done it a lot today, redundancies in a blowout preventer uh, as part of a valve that is or isn't part of uh, what's may or may not be required by law now. Um, again, understanding, Richard, that even in the area of the Gulf that we were, that, that we're, we're discussing, there are, there are lots of active wells. Um, so, uh, uh, the president, I will say this, and, and I heard him say this, uh, yesterday, the president, president believes that domestic production has to be part of 
our uh, overall comprehensive energy strategy. That not, we cannot, even as we have invested a lot of money uh, and helped others invest even more in wind and solar power, uh, that alone isn't going to change it. The President's decision on loan guarantees for uh, a nuclear plant, that alone won't change it. Uh, there are a host of things that we have to do to solve our uh, growing dependence on foreign oil. Um, and, and the President will, uh, is eager for, to, to know the findings of this investigation, and we will use those findings to, uh, to make any of those decisions moving forward. Just quickly, just quickly on the $75 million raising that cap, would, could that be retroactive to a budget situation? The, as I understand it, the legislation introduced by Senator Menendez and others does uh, go back and do that retroactively. Uh, obviously, we would be supportive of that. Uh, Robert, a couple more questions on this bill. The, the, uh, you talk about uh, with great confidence that you're going to be able to recoup this money from BP, yet the law as it currently exists requires a determination of gross negligence. Should we assume that the, the law, well, let's, let's be clear, under that law, uh, there, those are the three cap lifting exemptions uh, that the legislation that uh, uh, that I just talked about would seek to change and uh, uh, we uh, have been working on uh, efforts to do that. Is it constitutional to retroactively uh, alter a law so that, it, uh, so that it applies to a retroactive circumstance? Uh, I think it's been done and I've been asked about retroactivity as it relates to uh, other compensation, yes. Um, also, it appears from a, from a briefing uh, with Congress today that, uh, that this particular platform had been inspected uh, shortly before the accident, right. perhaps as soon as two weeks. Can you sort of explain what you know about that? Uh, you know, I don't have anything uh, beyond what um, Assistant Secretary of the Interior David Hayes uh, in the briefing that we would have done uh, last Thursday made mention, I forget the exact time period that he made mention. Of, uh, of, when, uh, of when that uh, rig had been inspected. I can go back and see. That, that's, uh, that's all I've seen or heard on that. And one, one quick question yes. on, on terror, uh, on the uh, Times Square plot. Um, uh, we've been fairly lucky, as you mentioned before, in terms of the, the ineptitude of, of, of these folks. Do you think the American people ought to brace themselves for the inevitability in the not too distant future that we're going to see a successful terrorist attack? Well, uh, I can't. Uh, I, I, Glenn, I would rather just simply leave it at the fact that, uh, uh, as I said earlier, this administration and this president are doing all that they can uh, within their power uh, to prevent anything from happening. I'll just leave, uh, leave it at that. Yeah. Um, did the security, any of the security changes put into place in the wake of Flight 253 um, help in the detection and apprehension of the Times Square? Yeah, I've, I've, I've asked John that question, and I have not been able to get something from him on that yet. Yes, sir. Just a, a real quick question uh, on the Middle East peace process uh, mm -hmm. on a day in which uh, Ellie we at Rizal met with the president. Mm -hmm. um, it was reported um, on Friday that uh, President Obama had spoken to European leaders and told them that if talks between Israel and uh, the Palestinians remain stalemated into September or October, he'll convene an international summit on achieving Mideast peace. Can you confirm um, uh, if whether the president yeah. is going down? I, uh, let, let me check with the NSC. I have uh, I have not heard that, but uh, but I will check with them and see if they have anything. Else. Yes, sir. Well, uh, listening to you, I get the impression that unlike Governor Schwarzenegger, unlike certain officials in Virginia, the president is committed. We need an energy mix for our energy security. Now, does that stance change if they can't cap off that leak and the damage gets much greater? Does he change his mind at some point? On the, the plan that he announced in March? Uh, he, yeah, I, I certainly wouldn't. I, look, I would not rule it out. I. I, I Again, I, I, the, the reason the President asked for, um, asked for uh, Secretary Salazar to do this particular investigation was uh, to examine what happened uh, and whether or not there was anything that could or should have been done uh, that would likely have prevented something like that from happening. And, and absolutely, he told us very specifically that, uh, that uh, though the 30-day period does not augment 
uh, any uh, leasing or drilling activities that I'm aware of. Um, uh, the president wants to use that investigation to, uh, to inform anything that might happen going forward. Um, so uh, obviously he will take that into accord. Um, there are, uh, there are, as I've said, there, there are many, many uh, wells that have been uh, drilled and explored in that section and area of the Gulf. Uh, obviously there was, um, th this is a little bit more unique because it is in 5,000 feet of water, not in uh, several hundred or a hundred feet of water. Uh, and obviously that's something the president uh, uh, will want to look at. Thanks guys.